Hey everyone, just want to give you a quick demo um, of the next project I'm working on here. This is the uh, Phony TV by Bulldog Lol from the Mind Sensors Forum. So basically what this is, is what it sounds like, a fake TV. So I'm standing outside of my house, uh, shining this through the window, um, through my blinds that are down. So this just looks like a TV is on in my house. This is a My Sensors project, so it's um, easily automated. Um, I integrate mine with my Vera and I can you know, set up a schedule, have it turn on specific times if I want or when my alarm is armed, whatever I want. Um, you get the idea. But basically it will hopefully deter people from robbing your house or stealing from your house because they think you're home. The nice thing is it's very low energy usage so you wouldn't have to leave a TV on. Uh, and you could just program it to randomly turn on and off at certain times so you know it always turns on so people think you're always home. But anyway, let me go in and show you how this is made. Okay, so this is a fairly simple project. I think the most complicated thing is just the layout and making sure you get all your wires connected in correctly. So right here, uh, I'm just starting. I've just laid out my LEDs here, uh, and then where I'm going to put my Pro Mini, my radio, and then this will be my power in here. So I'm still going to need to add my MOSFET transistors and my resistors. So I'm going to lay all that out um, and then get it all soldered in. So you may be able to tell from this video, I'm not sure if you can or not, but some of these LEDs have some color to them. All I did was just draw um, or color with some Sharpie on the bottom of them. So if they were to drop out as I'm soldering, I would know which color they are since when they come out of the package they all look identical. Okay, so before I get too far with my own build, I wanted to show you how I'm wiring things up. So first I have my um, Pro Mini and my radio connected um, to my board with my uh, female header connector strips. I just do this so I can remove them. Um, if any of these were to go bad at any point, I could easily remove it without having to desolder. Um, I've never actually had one go bad, but I have switched them out for testing uh, when I wasn't sure what the problem was with my um, other projects. So those are optional, you don't have to use them. Um, next we have our half watt resistors. Make sure you use half watt. Uh, you can check the wiring diagram. Uh, they do vary um, based on what color LED you're using. So the ohms vary. And then this is my uh, in-channel MOSFET transistor here. Um, which you can check the, the wiring diagram for the specific details on what one I'm using. Okay, so here's what the other side looks like. I had a nice clip of just one um, set of LEDs uh, soldered in, but I didn't take my own advice and follow a wiring diagram, so I miswired it, and I didn't figure it out until I had them all wired in and plugged it in. So, unfortunately, this is what we have to work with. Thankfully, the wiring's not too complex, and I'll post a link in the video description for the wiring diagram so you can refer to that uh, if these um, are just a little bit too busy. So. Anyway, um, what we have here is the power. So I just have my 5 volt and ground. So this is my 5 volt rail here and my ground rail. And then I just soldered in Cat5 cable to that. Um, I have my um, Arduino connections here and my radio connections here. That's all standard my sensors wiring. You can check out some of my other videos uh, for that if you want to see how I did all this. Um, so I'm just going to skip over that and what I'm going to focus on is the LED wiring. So there's going to be a total of 12 LEDs, but they're paired together so you're going to have six different um, wiring sets that you're going to do here. But once you get one, they'll all be the same. So you're going to have your, in your MOSFET transistor, uh, which, see if I can find a decent one here, uh, is right over here. You're going to have ground there and then you're going to have um, a pin from your Arduino, which is in the wiring diagram, connecting it to this side. And then the center is going to go to the LED, the ground, ground side of your LED. So there's going to be one here, and then one over here. Okay, and then the power side of the LED is going to be connected to the resistor, which will go to the 5 volt power. So you can see that here. And here. Okay, so there's my resistor there. Connection goes down there into my power. And then my other one is 
going to be up here. And then the resistor is going to be here, which will also go, go down there. So I use Cat5. I tried to color coordinate it as best I could so I could, uh, just for myself as I'm doing this, uh, I'd know which LEDs were which by the colors of the wires, but I didn't always, I wasn't always able to match that up. Okay, so that's the pattern. Basically, the ground is going to go into your MOSFET, and then from there, you're going to go off your Arduino. So you should have six different connections off your Arduino into six different MOSFETs, and then in, that will go into 12 LEDs. So I know that was a giant rat's nest of cables, so I wanted to show you the wiring diagram here. In case you're new to all this, and none of this is really making sense from my description, I wanted to at least show you how to read the wiring diagram. So here we have our Pro Mini and our radio, and then you'll just connect up the wires um, as directed here. You can see the pin numbers, and then they'll go to the radio pins, or you can check the MySensor site for that as well. Uh, then I've got my 5 volt power here. Now I wired in individual wires. I didn't have one long wire like this one here. Depending on the gauge of the wire you're using, you may want to do the same. Also, it's important to note the ohms value of these resistors here. Okay, so the red ones require 150 ohm. I'll zoom in here so you can see that. All the other LEDs will use 100 ohm resistors. Okay, so that's going to go into the uh, long leg of your LED. So your LED should have two legs, it should have a short and a long. So the power will go into the long leg, and then the ground will go into the short leg. Okay, so then this is what your uh, MOSFET transistors are going to look like here. <clears throat> so each of them has a gate, a source, and a drain pin. So you're going to want to check the data sheet for the MOSFET transistor you're using. Um, so this one over here on mine, the gate pin is this far left pin. And then that's going to connect into my Arduino, so that's what's going to be controlling um, this transistor. And then over here we have our uh, drain pin. And then the next one over the third one will be the source pin. So that's how this wiring diagram, that's how you'll read it. So the source will be the ground. So you can see if I zoom out here. This is my ground, that's the source. And then the drain pin will connect into your LED. So you're going to go off and put that into each of your LEDs, the ground, and then the gate, like I already said, will go into your Arduino. So that's the pattern that's going to be repeated um, over the six different sets you'll have here. So you can see if I zoom out, the reds are combined, the greens, and then we have blue. We have two sets of blue and two sets of white. Okay, and lastly, I forgot to mention this while I was talking about the resistors, but the direction of those does not matter. Um, if you're really new to this and you've never connected in a resistor, um, just connect either side, it doesn't matter, just as long as the ohms are correct. And make sure they're half watt as well, because these LEDs are going to be using a lot of power. Okay, so this is what my enclosure looks like. Uh, you obviously can do whatever you want with that. Uh, you should definitely check out the forum post for Jim's, he has another cool idea. Um, but I want to just hide mine in a picture frame with some mirror film. So uh, you can see that's what I did here. Um, so basically I just made a little wooden um, box, if you will, to go behind my picture frame so I could fit all the LEDs in there. Uh, so I just uh, glued that together, stained it to try and make it look somewhat like the picture frame color, and then uh, just screwed it into the existing frame. And then obviously you can see I took the picture frame backing, screwed that into my little wood frame here. Uh, and then I just um, sanded out a little hole for my wires. These are just temporarily in here. Um, when I'm done, I'll just connect those directly into the terminal block you saw there uh, in the previous section. Um, and then basically I'm just supplying it with 5 volt power using an old cell phone charger. Uh, and then I just cut an old USB cord and I'll just put the red and the black in there. So the red would be the 5 volts and the black would be the power. My only, I guess, regret with this project is the mirror film. I bought it uh, online and the shipper shipped it um, in a package, basically just no protection at all. So the film was pretty damaged when I got it. I tried to find the best part here, um, but there's definitely some little nicks in it and stuff. But, oh well. Live and learn, I guess. But overall, it turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, the mirror film's not perfect. Uh, you can definitely, if you look real close, um, see that it's not a perfect mirror. But it does the job. It's, it's definitely not um, LEDs hanging on the wall. 
If you decide that you want to do the mirror film like I did here, there's videos online, but basically all you do is take a little bit of um, baby shampoo in a spray bottle, mix it with water. I think I did like three drops of baby shampoo for a cup of water. There's a little adhesive that you tear, up, tear off the mirror film, and then you just spray it on your glass, and then squeegee the film on after that. And then you let it dry for a couple of days, and then it, it's stuck on there. Okay, so now let's talk about the code. So this code is available uh, via the link in the video description. So you can download it. Now you don't have to make any changes. I'm going to show you a couple that I made, but you could by all means just upload this to Arduino and it would work great for you. Uh, I'm also not going to cover installing the Arduino IDE, which is this application here, or uploading to your Arduino. Uh, I've made a separate video, which I'll link to here. Uh, if you need to learn that, you can check that out. Okay, so one of the things I do with virtually all my MySensors nodes is I first change the radio or node ID, depending how it's listed, uh, to all caps auto. What that will do is pull the next available node number from my gateway. So I like to just keep my nodes incrementing, and then once I've got a node ID assigned, I'll go in here and change it to the number that's been assigned later. Okay, next thing I changed was I turned off the repeating node functionality. So when it's listed as true here, this will be a repeating node. What that means is, is it will rebroadcast any messages it receives from other nodes where necessary. So you'd use that functionality if you have nodes that can't communicate with your gateway, and this would be in between them. It would relay those messages on. So where I have this placed, I'm not going to need to do that. So I've just changed this to false and then just deleted the zero. So that turns off the repeating node functionality, but you could leave that there. So those are the only two changes I made to the code. Okay, so that's it. Uh, once again, I just want to say a big thank you to Jim or Bulldog Lowell. I really appreciate you creating all this and making it possible to implement in my home. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and follow the link and post them in the forum. Thanks for watching, everyone.